think it's working now. Can you hear me? All aboard! Next stop, Chicago Junction. Yes, it's Chicago Junction, being the radio program that is everything that is about railroading. And here's our boss, the head of the Windy City Hometown Radio Network, as well as being the chief electrical engineer, Mr. John DeVita. Well, thank you very much, Brian, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another broadcast of Chicago Junction from the John DeVita Broadcast Center on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network and Jack FM 89.7 WRHS FM Norwich. Today the panel will be talking about railroads and model railroads. And now to start today's broadcast, here's our announcer, Mr. Brian. And here is our host, uh, who is not here today, actually. John Ryan is actually um, sick. He's indisposed of it this time. Did he call in with the caller and make sure that it was okay? Uh, I don't know. I haven't I gotten... Think he did. He talked to uh, oh, okay. Okay, so he he got an official day off. Yeah. So it'll be kind of open mic night with all uh, people. I am Brian Velou. I'm here with the uh, I'm with large scale railroading and O scale railroading, plus a lot of little historical groups <laughs> along the way, from the Reading Historical Society down to the Chicago chapter NRHS National Way, Railway Historical Society. And on my right, we got Doug Kunyuk. Howdy, everybody. Doug Kunyuk with the Railroad and Short Lines Club of Chicago. Ross Mullen, uh, Railroad Man. Oh, bring up number five. Uh-huh. You can turn me on. There, <laughs> there you go. Okay, Ron Smolin, just a railroad fan. Kevin Berry with the Chicago Land Lionel Railroad Club. Dave DeRuska, uh, former locomotive engineer, retired. And... Uh, couple blogs about railroading and uh, I do the Facebook page for the uh, Chicago Junction. And I want to say me being a retired Navy sailor I want to thank all you guys that did thank the veterans yesterday. And thank you Ron Smolin for that nice little bit on uh, Cincinnati. Yeah they uh, finally uh, got the trains going out there at least testing them on online. <laughs> <laughs> How how uh, long is that line? I want to say under three miles. Yeah. It's the first time they've had a mile in since what this I think this the sixties is when they shut down original or fifties possibly. Late fifties, I, I think it was. was the 50s, yeah. yeah. I remember them uh, telling me about. It. I remember I met uh, Robert Wagner. Who made all? Who wrote all the books and and made the car kits? I guess mm-hmm. Wagner cars. Yeah. Unique thing about Cincinnati was instead of a single trolley pole, they used a double, just like the trolley buses. Yes, they did. Yeah. That's where Dayton picked it up. Yeah. Any anything going on in the world of short lines? Ah, uh, yes, the uh, Cicero Central. Find it's going to look like it's going to start up on November 23rd. They're leasing one mile of line from Cicero to Central Avenue, the old Chicago and Illinois Western. Uh, they're mainly going to be contract switching for copper chemicals. That's why they need the overhead track. And that's about it. They're owned by Watco. I talked to a friend on the CN who switches down there, and I asked, so how are you guys going to get at the customers south of uh, Central? They said they don't know yet (laughs) because they're going to have to actually call this railroad to get permission to go over their own track to get to them. So that's the story on that one. That's the uh, Cicero Central. That's sort of a a unique railroad. It's only a mile. 
with one customer. Yep. Hey, whatever works. Yep. Saw so a couple of interesting things pop up uh, on the computer and in the news. Amtrak on their capital limited service between Chicago and Washington, D.C. will now let you bring a bicycle with you. There's a $20 fee. You get a hold of the conductor and he, he shows you uh, to the car with the, a rack and you lock your bike in. And then when you get to Washington, you can pick your bike up and go pedal all over Washington. And uh, there was another article that the Chicago and South Shore is going to be starting up bicycle service as well. So, you know, the folks from out uh, in Indiana that want to zip into Chicago can bring their bikes with them and then they don't have to rent a divvy bike and then go do their own thing. Well, that sounds good. The Amtrak's doing Santa Train this year, too, out of Union Station. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, they just announced it. Cool. As, is uh, Metro going to be doing it again? Uh, no, I don't think so. They haven't done. They haven't done in no, a couple of years. No, they haven't. There was only a special train that was run that, that's going to run again this year on the UP uh, Northwest line. Uh -huh. um, Try to remember what they call it. They actually wrap a uh, locomotive with a vinyl wrap, and they're going to uh, do six cars. I know Casa of Will County was doing a Polar Express until two years ago when Castle Rock Entertainment went uh, nuclear and threatened to take legal action against anybody who used the name Polar Express or read the book to the writers while they were on the train. You know, I think the Amtrak is going to be the Polar Express. Maybe they maybe they worked out yeah, a deal think, with Castle Yeah, I think I think they worked Rock. out a deal. I think they did. I, I I was surprised. I I really, really was surprised when Castle Rock did that. But then again, I suppose they have to protect their brand and their right. copyright. Right. It's just a shame that kids have to get hurt. Speaking of Metro, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get on the Metro thing. I got some um, stuff too. The uh, new F-59s are out running, finally. They got one running up and down Milwaukee Road line. And apparently Metro's going to be painting their older, the, F, the F-40s, in the same color scheme. They're going to repaint them. Oh, really? Yep. Are they going to wash them first? Uh, they're going to spend $91.1 million to do it. So, some of the F-40s are, 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 are showing their age. They look like they've been dipped in a mud puddle. Yeah, they, uh, 42 of them are going in for rehab and coming out with the new paint job. Yeah, from Progress Rail. Yep. Yep. And uh, up in Kenosha, a new railroad-themed restaurant opened called Choo, called Choo Choo Charlie's at uh, right across the street from the metro station, I guess, mm. judging by the address. It's right in the station. Oh, it's in the station. It is okay. in the station, yes. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, Simons is going to Siemens International's going to sell a bunch of diesel locomotives to uh, California Department of Transportation, Illinois Department of Transportation, and Maryland Department of Transportation. Joint order. Are they going to get an IOU from Illinois? <laughs> <laughs> no, they'll, the give, they'll give them a lottery ticket. All the <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it doesn't say how many Illinois you're going to get, unfortunately, <laughs> in the article. Ha half a locomotive. <laughs> Just says they're gonna, they're part of a deal buying about 14 of them. So they're going to split it between the three of them, I guess. <laughs> um, Berkshire Hathaway, Hath uh, Hathaway bought GE railroad assets. So that takes care of that. Is Buffett trying to give a monopoly on all the railroad assets? Well, apparently uh, Marmon Holdings is acquiring 25,000 tank cars, which comes from GE. So he might as well just buy GE so he gets the tank cars. Now, the Keystone is a dead project. Guess who gets all the oil business? BNSF. Who owns BNSF? 
Is this a quiz? <laughs> <laughs> uh, up in Racine, they want to join Metra. The city council is now spending money on how to get themselves Metra service extended to Racine and what they need to do and all the engineering studies and the station layout and everything. Yeah, now that the UP ripped up the double track, took the signals out. Well, they're going to do the same thing they did on the Sioux line. Metro will come in and lay in the second track, yeah, right, and all right, new signaling. Right. and UP will be happy. Yeah. Well, well, it's only half of the track has been taken up. The other half's used the siding. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. If you're into museums, the uh, Elkhart, the New York Central Museum, is getting a half a million dollars for improvements. So that should help down there a little bit. The inside of the station is fine. I think everything else needs improvement. Mm -hmm. um, there, there were two pieces of legislation that popped up in the last week on, on the computer. One is that a, an extension until 2018 on the block system that was supposed to be in place not later than the 31st of December right. of this train year. Control. Positive train control, not okay. block system. Positive train. And there's also supposed to be a one, some ungodly figure as an actual block of money given to the Department of Transportation for roadway and rail improvement not just not just a note but actual money so the Department of Transportation can start funding projects I want to say it's a hundred and seventy seven million dollars but I have a feeling that I've got the wrong Ilion behind it. <laughs> <laughs> it may be a B instead of an M. No, it's probably an M. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. But it might be a, not a hundred million. <laughs> the yeah. way they the way that gets passed around. Dave, what do you have? Oh well, talking about positive train control, uh, Metra has chosen a contractor to install PTC. It's called Parsons. Parsons Group. And the contract is estimated to be worth $80 million. It's uh, Metro's largest expenditure to date for installing PTC. As prime contractor, Parsons will work with Metro to install in, in, uh, this, this kills me, an inoperable electronic train management system. That's what they're calling it. That's what this article calls it, inoperable <laughs> electric train management system. That sounds par for the course for Metro. Uh, with 12 Chicago area railroads integrating the system of locomotive mounted uh, GPS systems, radios, trackside antennas, and computers. So that's uh, Metra has approved a uh, engineering study for 20 for their 2015 budget, but due to the uh, holdup of state funding, they have also suspended a number of projects. Uh, three new stations: one in Romeoville, on the Heritage Corridor the Auburn Park 79th Street Station on the Rock Island, and Peterson Ridge on the UP. Other suspended Metro Improvement projects are the Blue Island Vermont Station on the Rock Island, the Calumet Station on Electric Metro Electric, Cumberland on the UP, Grayland on the Milwaukee North, Hazelcrest on the Metro Electric, Healy Station on the Milwaukee North, Hickory Creek on the Rock Island, Hubbard Woods on the UP North, 59th, 63rd, and 115th on the Metro Electric, and uh, BNSF yard improvements, UP yard improvements, and uh, North Line Bridge Project Phase 2. So, a lot of things ain't going to happen until the state comes up with some money. And Metro is also beginning to test Wi-Fi on 10 of their rail cars. Woo uh, they uh, Metro did propose a fair hike to cover the PTC costs in 2016, which will amount to, I believe, about an uh, extra $2 on a monthly. I don't know how it shakes out with the other uh, fare structures. So I think that's pretty much it for the Metro. I got more stuff in here, but anybody else want to chime in with anything? There was a surprisingly large two-page write-up in the, the Red Eye on another... <laughs> 
abandoned section of railroad track that's going to be turned into a walking trail. It will go, I want to get this correct, it will go from 26th Street near Rockwell Avenue, past the Cook County Jail, the Discount Mall, La Velita Park, and down to 32nd Street near the Paul Simon Job Corps Center. So it's it's going to be a, a nice little trek. There is a group known as the Little Village Environmental Justice Organization that uh, is involved with it. To uh, they're judging the environmental and economic impact of this proposed park. And if I read and understood the article correctly. Their main concern is they don't want the the walkway to cause a gentrification and force the residents out. As they say, the 606 park is doing over in Humboldt Park. Good luck. Yep. Although I can't see uh, any gentrification that doesn't include moving Cook County Jail out of the neighborhood. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't see how that's going to improve the know. neighborhood. They make great condos. <laughs> <laughs> Very secure. <laughs> Gated community. Uh, yeah, that's 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 why every three or four years there there's an unescorted exodus <laughs> from the place. <laughs> yeah, that's and, the old Illinois Northern, right? Yes, the old Illinois Northern and. Uh, it was originally built by, I believe, the Santa Fe, then sold to the Grand Trunk. Santa Fe, then the Grand Trunk so sold it to El International Harvester. Right. And then International Harvester sold it back to the Santa Fe. Then they leased it to the Central Illinois Railway to be switched. And then when those guys bellied up, they took it back. But by that time, there was hardly any customers left, so right. they filed for abandonment. Well, the 606 trail is 2.7 miles and that's very well received by the people in the community and the other other ones that are at various stages of consideration or acquisition are the Addison Underbridge Connector, the Weber Spur Trail and there's another one the New Era remaking a new era trail, the Englewood Remaking America, and that's going to be uh, between 58th and 59th Street between Wallace and Hoyne. Right, the, the old Englewood connector for the Pennsylvania Railroad. That was built when the two lines, they needed to connect them, so they formed a railroad called Englewood Connecting. They, when they formed it, it was right at the time Chicago was forcing everything to be elevated, so it's actually above grade through there. Yeah, it's been sitting idle for a long time. Since the the Weber, Weber Spur is former Northwestern track. Former Northwestern starts at about Wilson and Cicero, runs northeast to Lincolnwood, then to Skokie, then ends in Evanston. Uh, track at Evanston's gone. It's been built over. Right. Uh, Lincolnwood, along with Chicago, is still trying to make that into a trail. Yeah, I remember at one time at Weber, when Weber, Weber Yard was still active, they had a number of ex-CTA uh, Elevated cars stored there. Uh, yep, the CTA shops used to get their stuff from the Northwestern. It would be brought in on flat cars and offloaded. Come right up the Weber line, they'd switch right at uh, right on the other side of Tui Avenue and send it in. Right. The only thing that that sticks out in my mind about the the raised track there between 58th and 59th is as you get further west, there must have been a lot of either lumber yards or coal yards along there because there's an awful lot of sections that uh, look like they would have been ideal for call hoppers to dump right from the track because you can the, the just the way the the footing is poured with the with the wide mm -hmm. uh, wide braces and an awful lot of exposed track underneath and you can there, there are still some signs over there from coal companies uh, the, I think Gruen Coal still has a big sign up over there. Anybody remember the coal yard that used to be by Wrigley Field? No, just saw pictures of it. Yeah. 
But I do remember boxcars being on that little spur there and them offloading beer yeah. from the park. So <laughs> I got a, 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 bit, a bit of bad news from Rochelle. Nippon Shero is laying off workers at its plant in Rochelle assembling bi-level passenger cars after a prototype car shell failed key safety tests. It's building, uh, Nippon Shero is uh, building cars to one design for state-sponsored inner-city Amtrak service in Illinois, Michigan, Missouri, and California. Uh, the cars would be, would have been used to re-equip the Chicago-St. Louis Lincoln service train, the Chicago Quincy Carl Sandburg, the Illinois Zephyr, and the Chicago Carbondale Saluki and Illini trains. Uh, the company has yet to discover whether the 800,000 pound compression test failure which caused the shell to buckle was a result of poor workmanship, production failures, or a fundamental design flaw. Company engineers are reviewing the design. The compression test was meant to demonstrate how the car would respond in an accident, protecting passengers. Uh, let's see what else it says here. Uh, original quest for proposal for 130 bi-levels cars was based on specifications written by the Nest Generation Quarter Equipment Pool Committee. The original contract was signed in 2012 with the requirement that all production would be completed by 2017, though the order was sub subsequently up to 175 cars uh, with the excess available funding as a result of Nippon Shiro's lower-than-expected bid. So not good, not good news for rail, uh, the rail industry in Illinois. Well, there's some good news, though. The uh, Fox River Bridge, the old Milwaukee Road over to Fox River, is going to get replaced. It's going to go from single to double track. Uh, Durbin and, uh, what's her name, Duckworth, got a $14 million Tiger grant to replace the bridge. So now it's going to be double track instead of single track. Mm. Uh, one less bottleneck. Yep. Well, it says here there's like... Uh, 50 Metra and 8 uh, freight trains a day over that bridge. It, it's not local news, but down in Florida, they just approved a massive bond issue. They're going to build a rapid rail line from Miami to Orlando, and they're going to run a think the article said 110 cars in total over a 24-hour period every day so people can fly into Miami and then take the high-speed train to Orlando to all the attractions out there and that project is supposed to be completed in late 2017 so instead of having to take that charming hour and a half cab or van ride when you're going to Disney or Universal you'll be able to grab the train and then it'll only be like a 10 or a 15 minute hop to wherever you're going well it seems positive well it's still going in California too so yep. something will happen well, yeah you know any and anytime new train track is built it's noteworthy. Yes, it is. Meanwhile, in the state of Illinois, <laughs> 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 the state budget and passed impacting a possible Amtrak train station in Rockford. The uh, city of Rockford is feeling the effects of gridlock in Springfield. No budget means no Amtrak train for now. Uh, construction of the new Joliet Transportation Center is stalled. Although I read that they uh, rec recently read that they found some money and they may get it back on track again. Uh, Metro Chairman Major Hurdles to clear before Metro Commuter Service comes to Kendall County. Uh, that, that's that been uh, on the wish list for people out there for decades. Uh, Metro now has new chimes to alert crews to slow down. A new three-note chime is now being used on Metro trains to warn crews <laughs> <laughs> that their trains are approaching a location where a speed limit drops by at least 20 miles an hour, such as a curve or a bridge. There are 17 locations on Metro's 11-line system. The crews already know these locations, but the chimes are intended to be a reminder. Yeah. Uh, th I, 
I also I won't mention the person's name, but they they did catch an engineer on the Metro Electric uh, using a cell phone while operating the train. Yeah. <laughs> As I mentioned the name to Brian, he he gets excited. <laughs> Well, the Illinois budgets caused us to lose a train station in Moline. They were going to move it, but because right. of the budget cuts and the fact they want to build a highway ramp there, the station's going to get torn down instead. Yeah. It was supposed to be moved to, uh, yeah, here it is. The state won't move old D-R-I-N-N-W Moline Depot, plans demolition, 115-year-old depot. was supposed to be moved to, let's see, where they're going to move it to some college campus. And... Uh, Oh, they're, they're supposed to move it, uh, move the building to the Western Illinois University Riverfront campus. In September 2014, however, WIU officials said it couldn't take the depot after learn, learning it would cost more than $800,000 to make it usable. Since then, preservation advocates have tried to find a new location and owner, but Moline Mayor Scott Ray said Illinois no longer has the funds to move the building. So. Oh, we have the Museum of Science and Industry uh, locomotive auction results. Yes, the, the MSI had a, a bunch of uh, old equipment for sale. Uh, they don't have the names of the successful bidders, but they do have the prices. The 1824 uh, Braithwaite and Erickson Mississippi locomotive was sold for $200,000. The 1825 John Stevens locomotive replica was sold for $60,000. Uh, the 1831 York locomotive replica was sold for $110,000. And okay. that went to the B&O yeah, Museum. Yeah, B&O Museum. Uh, the 1870 Archer Number no. 10 horse car streetcar replica was sold for $38,000. And the 1920 Pennsylvania Railroad locomotive cab sold for $27,000. And I want to know whose rec room that's going to be in. Not mine. So are those still at the museum, or are those now off-site? I, I don't know. They don't say. No. Well, they'll be, uh, they're supposed to be cleared out by the end of the month. Well, yeah, so they have to make room to start bringing in the motorcycles. <coughs> well, I'll mention this new hobby shop we talked about earlier. There is a new hobby shop in Alsip, Illinois. Over the years, many of hobby shops in the greater... Chicago area have uh, have closed their doors, leaving model rail railroaders with just swap meets or the internet for the modeling needs. If you're interested in a local store uh, for your HO and N gauge train supplies, sorry guys, no Lionel O gauge, we suggest you pay a visit to your hobby shop, 4016 West 127th Street, Alsip, Illinois, and their phone number is 708-597-4197. Well, that's been interesting, and this closes the first half of our Railroad Hour. Uh, time for a station identification. Take it away, John. You are listening to Chicago Junction on Jack FM 89.7 WRHS FM Norwich and the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network. From the John DeVita Broadcast Center on Monday, November the 16th, the year 2015. And now, back to our panel and Chicago Junction. Thank you, John. Uh, we'll welcome back. And about, the, about rails around Chicago, and I guess it's my turn. Uh... <laughs> our silent partner over there i know he, he's sitting there just enjoying this <laughs> he's tickled like bank. a cheshire cat yeah <laughs> he's got that grin uh i just got a few things uh we're coming into the holiday season so some big displays are going up uh chicago botanic garden is uh building up their christmas layout at this time and will open on black friday Day after Thanksgiving, uh, the Winter Wonderland Express at the Chicago Botanic Garden will run until January 3rd. How many trains are you going to have this year? Uh, we're going to have 12 trains running, one O-gauge. 
Uh, they're going to, uh, uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, that's going to be 12. Uh, the will be an elevated line using uh, MTH uh, streetcars. Cool. Uh, the LGB Club of Chicago will again be participating at the Brookfield Zoo starting the uh, first weekend in December and every weekend after that until the 26th and then run until the 31st of January or 31st of December uh, on their uh, parade of lights that they would be doing out there. Those are the two major ones and of course the, some of the department stores and conservatories that have set up small layouts. Uh, several greenhouses in the area are also setting up layouts uh, to help bring the people in keep the kids busy the uh, Chicagoland Lionel Railroad Club is configured in its holiday best the November open house which is the third Saturday in November the December open houses which this year are the first two Saturdays the fifth and the twelfth and then the January open house the third Saturday in January uh, will all have be in, in full Christmas mode December 5th and December 12th uh, the chief engineer of the North Pole and Snowflake Railway will be there in the prescribed seasonal uniform so if you want to come out to the train club uh, there is no charge for photos with Santa please bring your own camera it's included in your admission to the clubhouse uh, the clubhouse is at 1311 South Schoolhouse Road in New Lenox and you can find your way there by either googling the Chicagoland Lionel Railroad Club or by going to C L R C trains all in lowercase letters dot com and when you click on the website there's a little link to get directions and the club is open from nine to three on the days of the open houses and again if you're coming for the photos with Santa they will be from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. and please remember to bring your camera that sounds good yeah they, they took two of the storage lockers up in the mezzanine and they have the, the proper clapperboard siding painted caboose red and there's a small roof at, at the one end and the yellow railing and ladders and a actual brake wheel and an actual grab rail on the side and himself sits there in the big leather chair so you, you can get a picture of your child sitting in, in Santa's lap on the, the tail end of a caboose. It's It's a very unique opportunity I, oh, that sounds pretty good I just wish my grandkids were mm -hmm. gonna be up from Nashville one of those weekends and well we have uh, what Christmas trains running we got Fox uh, River <coughs> Fox uh -huh. Rivers yeah Fox yeah, trolley, River right. trolley museum they have I think uh, I'm pretty sure they got four weeks of operation out there I think theirs is only on Sunday if I'm not mistaken but I'm not sure Check the website for that. I know uh, Illinois, Railway, Illinois Railway Museum is operating two weekends of Christmas trains. The second weekend, which is the 5th, and, and then the weekend of the 12th. They're running on both Saturday and Sunday. And then East Troy is running four weeks of Christmas trains, starting, and that's both Saturday and Sunday. That starts on uh, Thanksgiving weekend and then the first three weekends of December. So we've got a lot, a lot of Christmas trains out there. Also, um, I, I remember a long time ago, I had went up to East Troy for the first time, and they, uh, Santa used to arrive on a trolley. And I guess they used to uh, decorate the tree in the park at the same time. Do they still do that? They still have a train that is lit up because that, that was the old tradition in Milwaukee. The uh, annual Christmas parade when Santa came to town, 
it followed the streetcar lines and it was used with streetcars and they had flat cars all decked out just like you would see a regular parade but all the parades were pretty much all run, ran with streetcars and slowly as the streetcars were demised then they changed over to flatbed trucks with trolley poles and they operated on the streets with the trolley buses <laughs> so all the floats and everything were lit up with the actual electric that the buses would be using out of the streetcars would be using so yeah east try does one train and i forget how many cars six or seven cars i think they, that they do and they, they they deck it all out and they do have a christmas train no oh, that's good yeah uh, is the cta going to be running with the i would assume their annual one i would assume they haven't you know, they're always slow in, in announcing everything. They want to keep everything secretive, and all of a sudden, <laughs> hey, guess what we're doing again? <laughs> but, yeah, th I think they'll do it again. That's that's so successful for them. They I know who to call to get the info. I'll give my buddy Bruce a call. There you go. Bruce Moffat. He, Bruce. If anyone knows, he'll know. Bruce would know. Bruce would know. And speaking of your CTA, you know, we were talking, you were talking about this line, that Weber line that would go into into Evanston that was right under where that uh, collapse took place also in that same general area when Skokie Swift went out of business for what I think five months mm -hmm. they just reopened on uh, October 30th Friday of last week yes yes they had free rides for the whole week you can get on in Dempster or you can get on at Oakton Street when you got to Howard Nobody took your fare. You just kept on going downtown if you wanted to. So, of course, for certain train fans who had nothing better to do, started riding at about 7.30 in the morning. <laughs> 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 oh, my. I think I've had my fellow Skokie Swift for a while. <laughs> <laughs> the Emerald City Express? Yeah. Yeah, and also, uh, if they want to ride a nice Christmas train, uh, the Heston Steam Museum in Indiana. Uh, they ride uh, the first two weekends of December, and uh, usually steam on the two-foot, three-gauge, dual-gauge line. And if you uh, bring a uh, present for, uh, to give for uh, Toys for Tots, you get a free train ticket out of it. And you get free hot chocolate and uh, uh, cookies. And like yours, only they have the magic caboose sitting on a siding, and they go in there to sit on Santa's lap. Oh, that's... It doesn't all have to be the same way, as long as, you know, at some point the kid gets to see Santa. Oh, definitely. I was... I do a train display for the Emerald Society's Christmas party. I've been doing it every year for 25 years and something popped into my head the other day and I have to create a billboard but it was a line out of uh, it was a Christmas movie and I can't remember what it was but it says when you stop believing in Santa you get underwear for Christmas. <laughs> I believed in Santa, and I still got underwear for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> there were severe doubts about the level of your belief. <laughs> <laughs> and that 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 triggered the uh, the, the movie Polar Express started to play in my head with the obnoxious little kid that sees they they go past the the store with the display in the window, and he he starts quoting all the statistics about. The engine is a Berkshire, and how many pounds of thrust, and how much it weighs. And oh Lord! It wasn't just a Berkshire; it was an S two. <laughs> he must be the guy that goes to most of my rail group meetings. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah, almost like Jimmy Corbin. <laughs> he, he's a rail fan from Cincinnati. Yeah. When I was out in Hammond to see the, the Lincoln train and, and had the pleasure of meeting you out there. Uh, one of the flagpoles has the obnoxious little child from Christmas, Christmas story. story 
with his stu tongue stuck to the flagpole. And <laughs> Do you know why Hammond's so proud of that? The screenwriter is from Hammond. And the visitor center every year has been putting up the, uh, the Christmas story display for everybody to see. And they got they got the window displays that came from Marshall Fields. Or, excuse me, Macy's. No, they came from Marshall Fields. And But they have them all set up there. And then like um, every other weekend, they have a different event going on. And they have a... Uh, mashed potato race <laughs> eating contest and then they have the fudge nut race remember the scene when he kicked over his dad was fixing the flat tire and the lug nuts came out and he said fudge <laughs> well that's what they have and they race them and uh, actually November 7th is when they opened up the display so if you just want to take a nice ride go to the uh, Indiana Visitor Center there at exit three. And you park in the parking lot when the train's not there. I, I got lucky and the the the, the ESDA officer said yeah, you can sneak in the back of the Wendy's because they're only using the drive through. So, you know, and my wife my wife had foot surgery and she's not a hundred percent yet, so the fact that Shoney had to walk about a hundred yards was really outstanding. But the 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 Lincoln train, and I'm sure it's been discussed. Uh, the people that did the work on that truly deserve to be commended. It, it's an excellent piece of historic recreation. And I did my undergraduate work in history, so i I truly appreciate it from the historical level and from the rail fan level. Oh, that's okay. I got a newsletter from the uh, Cincinnati Cinder Sniffers, <laughs> which is a live steam group, and they have their layout actually over in Do uh, Dover, Indiana. But they had nice pictures of the uh, train when it was uh, on display up in Troy, Ohio. Nice pictures. We were in the middle of the street there, too. And he, he's sitting there. Unbeknownst to him, he didn't realize he caught a picture of me in, yeah. in it. And he was talking about how beautiful and how shiny the brass was on the locomotive. And I'm standing there. I'm holding a, my brass polishing rag in hand <laughs> when I was talking to some of the people. So I wrote him a nice letter and thanked him for the compliment. Another usable skill your military service provided you with. <laughs> hey, they retired Navy. He knows how to take care of brass. So you could the the brass on that engine was really turned out. You could have almost shaved in the reflection. And I would not have put it past you, Brian, to have done that. I've done some crazy things in my life. Well, let's see. You got some more news here? Oh, I should I should uh, give a credit to where I'm getting most of my news from. It's from the Black Hawk Railway Historical Society. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bill Maloney, who uh, does a great job of putting out this newsletter every uh, two months. The uh, Union Pacific proposes to replace the Kankakee River Bridge. The UP has applied for a permit to replace its railroad bridge over the Kankakee River at Wilmington, Illinois, as part of the Illinois High Speed Rail Project, according to public notices issued by the Illinois Department of Natural Resources. And uh, the project needs a permit from IDNR because it spans a public river. The UP wants to replace the existing structure, a 540-foot five-span single-track bridge, with two side-by-side -side single-track bridges. The new bridges will be longer and higher than the existing bridge. Uh, vertical clearance for the new bridge will be between 21.3 and 26.7 feet above normal water level, about 8 feet higher than the existing bridge. Uh, the proposed north bridge would be 573 feet long and feature 8 spans. The proposed south bridge would be 604 feet long and feature 9 spans. The new bridge would share common bridge piers and the piers would be uh, skewed in the direction of the angle of the river. Illinois Constructors Corporation will build 
two temporary steel bridges to be used during demolition of the existing bridge and construction of the new bridges. So Illinois High Speed Rail is on its is still going. Shall I continue? Oh. Um Plan to rebuild Chicago Union Station finally starts to roll. Hey. That was his theme song. That was his theme song. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought it was Chattanooga Choo Choo. After years of studies, a coalition of local government units and Amtrak has announced the first steps to finally rebuild the crowded and outmoded Union Station. On tap immediately are a new passenger lounge and repairs to the stately but leaking 219-foot-long skylight that covers the building's great hall. But much more expansive work, especially widening train platforms, providing better street-level access, and opening a direct connection to the Chicago Transit Authority's Blue Line, aren't yet funded, although Amtrak is moving to lease potentially lucrative air rights for high-rise office development. I don't know if anybody's familiar with uh, a number of proposals were put forth over the years for building uh, a high-rise over Union Station because the station itself actually has the structural steel. It was originally designed to be a much taller building. So the steel that's currently in place can support a high-rise structure. And I guess they're talking about cantilevering it over the uh, the dome for the great room. Who knows? Uh, I I I worked on a video that actually uh, looked at one of the one of the proposals, and they were actually going to do some radical alterations on either end of the station. And I, it was finally it, it never went through because the the economy took a nosedive. Uh, the new activity, which seems to have the city, Amtrak, Metro, CTA, and RTA authority all, uh, all on the same page, will come in phases, some fast and some slow. But the quickest is the announcement that Amtrak will use $14 million of its own money to build a new lounge that will double the space for sleeping car and business class passengers at concourse levels, restore the skylight, upgrade heating, and create banquet and event space. Um, I'm assuming they're gonna they're gonna put the banquet space in the former uh, restaurant that was on the west end of the station. That right now it's just kind of vacant space. They've they've used it for various things. Usually when they have a a banquet, they take over the waiting room and inconvenience everybody in the process. Yep. Uh, second, Amtrak will issue a request for proposals for a firm to plan and do preliminary engineering on 13 high-priority improvements included on the list are 13 fixes identified in a prior master plan, including expanding the lobby and giving it much improved direct access to Canal Street, new entrances at Adams and Madison and Jackson, widening two platforms with the addition of elevators and escalators, construction of a tunnel to the nearby Ogilvy Station, wow, Renovation and expansion of retail space and opening of a tunnel to the Clinton Street Blue Line station. The agencies have agreed to share about $5 million in costs for the preliminary engineering, but no source yet has been identified uh, of needed funds, which could easily pass $100 million. The preliminary design work is scheduled to be done in 2017. Finally, Amtrak has also announced its issuing a request for a master developer who could design, build, and finance expansion opportunities including air rights over Union Station, using a vacant space in the facility and construction in nearby property on the west side. Uh, I don't know if anybody's been watching the TV news, but they recently had an article about the, the fact that Union Station is one of the most polluted places in the world from the, <laughs> from the diesel, fu diesel fumes. I don't know what the story is. Originally, the you know they had... Uh, smoke lifters and equipment to bring all the, when they had steam locomotives there, they had the buildings that were originally built over the air rights had uh, an exhaust system. Now, my understanding was that whoever owns the buildings has let the exhaust system deteriorate so it's no longer working. And uh, Amtrak's, I don't know if they've been trying to get these people to, to repair this stuff or what the story is, but it ain't getting done. And any, I, I no, used to, Well, it's the post office. Is it the post office? It's the post office, and they put the fans in. But when they were operating them, yeah, it was uh, annoying all the postal workers, so they turned them off. Well, there's no postal workers there anymore. 
and they still haven't turned it on. <laughs> but I yeah, yeah, that was that was the the, the main problem. Yeah, I know when when I I used to I used to go out to the western suburbs on Friday nights when my wife worked out there, and I'd catch the the train out there, and man, it was like horrible, awful. I couldn't believe that people would actually go sit in the, in the front cars on the, on the train. I mean, the further down you got the platform, the more noxious it got. I used to work right across the street in a building right across the street from Union Station. So it was nice. I didn't have to wear a coat or nothing. I ran out of my office, went right into Union Station, middle of winter. I was in a sweater. That was enough. When you got downstairs, forget it. You suffered. Yeah. You could not breathe down there. You just... You stayed away from the trains as much as you, as you had to, because the minute you started walking around down there, you could not you could not even breathe. You know, they they on, on the BN side they they shut everything down and put it on house power when the trains come in, but they did still have to fire them up at some point and get them yeah. ready to go. I mean, and they they time it pretty close to the departure time. I mean, yeah. lights go out on the train and you know when the lights come back on they've got the, but they don't shut the diesels down. Yeah, they can't. Yeah. Somewhere in your uh, story there, they left out one part that I saw. They're also going to utilize the old Van Buren street, s streetcar subway and revamp that into a basically a pedestrian walkway under the river so you can get to facilities on the east side huh. of the river and to businesses on the west side. They were going to use it for that. Yeah, a lot of people don't know about the Van Buren Street yeah, sub. It's still there. Sub, I know. It's still sitting right down there. The last building I worked at before I retired was at right along Washington Street. And I look straight down from my office. I can see right where the streetcar used to go right. underneath the tracks and where it would go underneath. You know, right. Now, of course, it's all level, but even that line is still on there, too. Yeah. Yeah, so they're supposed to use the, use the Van Buren. Going back to the beginning of uh, the show, you mentioned about Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. Let me add to that. Cincinnati, as we talked about earlier, Cincinnati is building a new streetcar system, as, that, as that's what they're calling it, even though they're using modern uh, light rail technology. So they ran their first train electrified over the over the entire route to make sure that the tracks were good and there was no derailments that they used power and all the clearances were done and also this week the same thing was done in Kansas City who's also building a similar line a light rail and they too also powered it up for the first time and did the same thing they they took the train and you know, all the boys were walking alongside of it and the train operated on its own power but it, it was in a couple miles an hour going when people were walking along it, making sure that traffic stayed away. But both both operations had, had good clearance. So everything is good on both of them. All right. Are they using Cantonary or Third Rail for Cat power? Cantonary. Oh, yeah, definitely yeah, Cantonary. Over. Overhead. In <laughs> fact, in Cincinnati, they're the Cincinnati Union Terminal, uh, which has been turned into a museum complex, is actually being shut down this year so they can do structural repairs that they haven't done. So the whole uh, the whole uh, building is actually going to be emptied and rebuilt. Mm. And uh, the uh, Cincinnati Railroad Club's kind of worried that they might not get Tower A back. I think they will. I hope they do. And uh, because summer rail, is, uh, they've found a new place to uh, hold uh, summer rail because the, uh, the theater will be closed down. Yeah. But it'll like be nice. Yeah. And I'd like to add one thing to my comments earlier about all the Christmas trains at the three museums. The trains were, are all heated nowadays. Ah. I go back to when East Troy was first running them and they ran their Christmas trains. And, you know, they got two 4,000 cars out there, CTA cars that they run. The heaters are not hooked up in those cars. <laughs> so in the middle of winter, you yeah, Santa's warm. He's got his this outfit on. You're sitting <laughs> over there going, okay, when is this over? I'm freezing. <laughs> the hot chocolate was not too hot by the end of the line. <laughs> I can imagine that. Oh. Well, it seems like we're coming to the end of our line. So from Dave Deruska. 
Kevin Berry, Ron Smallen, Doug Kenyuk. That's right. <laughs> and my, your sponsor and your host announcer, Brian Velo. You want to sponsor us, bring donuts. Yes. Duncan. <laughs> very good. Uh, we want to wish you a very happy and safe Thanksgiving. And when you're trackside, just remember to look, listen, and live. Chicago Junction. Yes, we're on our way out of Chicago Junction. Well, when you heard you come back next week, where we join us again, where we take. Our railroads to the imagination, our continuing journey to our wonderful world of trains. Chicago Junction is a production of the Windy City Hometown Radio Network and can be heard over this station as well as the WindyCityHometown.com where recordings of all our shows may be heard. Once again, all aboard, this is your announcer, Brian Ballou, saying hurry back. You have been listening to Chicago Junction on Jack FM 89.7, WRHS FM Norwich, and the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network from the John DeVita Broadcast Center on Monday, November the 16th, the year 2015. Chicago Junction was produced by John DeVita and directed by John DeVita. Our audio engineer is James Rohde and radio station manager Kevin Seflick of WRHS FM Norwich. And executive producer of Windy City Hometown Entertainment is Mr. John Chicano. This broadcast was pre-recorded on Thursday, November the 12th, the year 2015. Until next time, please be safe and thanks for listening. And this is Jack FM, 89.7 WRHS FM, Norwich, Illinois. Have a great day, everyone.